Hey everyone, in this video, you'll learn how to build a real website with Bootstrap Studio. We will start from blank page and build the layout. Use the responsive grid, write CSS, and we'll even make a simple gallery with a light box. The first step is to create a new blank design. We won't give it a name. Just go ahead and press the Create button. I have a folder with assets here that a client has sent me about their new bakery. Their wish is to turn these into a responsive website. They gave me a logo and some illustrations, and a text document with the copy they wish to include. We will go ahead and import all the images by dragging and dropping them, and we'll open the text document to have it ready for later. So the customer wants to have cakes, pricing in order as links in their top navigation menu. We can make this using a nav bar. This is a bootstrap component that you're probably familiar with. It gives you a responsive and functional top navigation menu. Let's open up the HTML panel to see the HTML that was generated. All right, so we first have to change the brand of the nav bar. Double click to edit it as text. I'll go ahead and type the name of the business. Let's make this part bold. Very well. Now we hit apply to commit the changes. Let's make the link show in the right part of the nav bar. We just select the nav and choose to align to the right. Now let's change the links. Double click to edit them. To add one more, we'll use this toolbar button. Great. Now we need to create a promo section that features the client's offer of the day. We'll drag and drop a div. Then we'll place a jumbotron inside it. Because the div has a zero height, we can't drop it inside the div from here. We'll use the overview panel for this. Just drop it on top of the div. There. All right, and now let's see the HTML that was generated. Looking good. To make styling easier, let's set an ID on this div. We'll call it promo. Let's write some CSS to style it. Click the create button and a new CSS block will show up. We'll change the selector a bit and we'll make the elements content with the text align property. Let's add some padding. 40 pixels should be enough. Looking better already. Now we wanna add a nice background image. I think this one would look nice as a background. Let's try it. Just start typing and Bootstrap Studio will suggest the image name. We'll also add the background size property to scale the image to fit. The CSS we just wrote is added to your style sheet file. Double click to open it in the CSS editor. There, now the Jumbotron can use some work. Let's style it. Clicking when a blue line shows up creates a new CSS block. We want to prefix the selector with the ID of the parent div so that it affects only this Jumbotron. All right, now let's round it a bit. 20 pixels would look nice. It needs some padding as well. We will also make it semi-transparent by setting its background to an RGBA color that is 75% visible. That's much better. Let's see how this looks in a real browser. Hit the preview button and mark the checkbox to enable the preview. This starts a web server that is visible on your local network. Just press here to open the URL in the browser. All right. Let's resize the window to see how responsive the page is. What we see immediately is that it takes up the entire width of the window, which doesn't look nice on large screens. We need to limit it. Okay, so we'll limit the Jumbotron with a combination of a max width and centering using Margin Auto. Let's switch up to the browser real quick. It is updated automatically with our latest CSS, so there's no need to reload the page. You can see that the Jumbotron is now centered but doesn't take up the whole page, which looks nicer. Let's switch the screen size to see how things look in the app. 
There is too much padding on small screens, which doesn't leave enough room for the text. Let's fix this. We'll create another block of CSS code, which will limit with a media query to show only on small screen sizes. Let's try with 20 pixels. Yep, looks much better. Now we want to limit this block to only small screen sizes. We'll do this with a media query. When you click here, the current screen size is placed as the media query max width. So the CSS block will be active only on the current screen size or smaller. But it looks like we also need to decrease the space around the Jumbotron on small screens. We'll do it with a smaller pixel value for the promo padding. Looks good. We just need to make this active only on small screens with a media query. And the result is more room for text on small screens and more padding on large devices. All right, I think it is good enough. I'll click here to get this panel out of the way. Now let's move on with the intro text. We'll need to place another div. Actually, now that I think of it, a container would make more sense because we want to limit how wide this part of the page is. Then we will add a heading for the title. And lastly, a paragraph for the text. Let's switch to the text file and copy the text. First, we will copy the title, double click the component and paste inside it. Now we'll do the same with the paragraph. There. If you are like me, you are not a huge fan of the default bootstrap theme. Bootstrap Studio comes with a number of alternative ones that are much nicer. From the list, I'll choose the readable theme, which is one of my favorites. Hit the button and the page is instantly transformed. Looks a lot better than the default theme. Let's open the HTML panel again. I would like to tweak the theme a bit, as I would prefer a sans serif font for the body copy of this particular design. To do this, we need to select the body component and then switch to the Styles tab to see all active CSS rules. This block sets the font family for the page, and as you can see, it is defined in the Bootstrap style sheet. We can't edit this directly. We need to copy it to our style sheet first. Just click here, and we'll have our very own copy of the block. You can see it at the bottom of our styles.css file. I'll move it to the top to keep things organized. So now we can delete the rules that we don't need to override. Just hit delete and then enter to remove them. For the font family, we want to specify a sans serif font stack. The page is updated in real time as we make the change. Great, things are a lot nicer now. Let's make the intro prettier. Select the heading element. This will focus it in the HTML panel. So now we can select its parent container. Click the Attributes form to show it. We will be adding more containers like this to the page, so we better give it a class name to make all of them easier to style. Now let's create a CSS block for it. We need to center it with text align, and then we will add some comfortable padding around it. Very well. We need to write some more CSS to style this section, but it will be specific for the introduction. So we will place the code in a new block with an ID selector. First, we give it an ID. Welcome will do. Then we create a new CSS block with that ID. We need to limit its width of the paragraph with a max width, so it matches the width of the Jumbotron. Then we will increase its font a bit. Lastly, we will center it with a margin. I think it would look better if headings and site sections had a normal font weight and if there was more space beneath them. Let's write some CSS for this. All right, looking better. I will tweak the padding a bit to make it prettier. Now we can move on with the feature section. 
I will go ahead and duplicate the entire introduction to speed things up. Don't forget to change the ID to something unique. We don't need this paragraph anymore. What we need instead is to create a grid row with three columns. I will drag and drop a row. Then I will place a column inside it. You can see in the HTML that columns take the entire width of the row by default. We want to decrease this from 12 positions to 4. If you have the column selected, you can do this from the Options panel. We have a control over a number of other column properties here, including offset and push and pull. This is very handy when working with the bootstrap grid. Now we will need to drop a heading. Click it to change the type of tag from H1 to H2. Then we will drop a paragraph. Let's copy things over from the text document. First, the section title. Then the name and paragraph. Now we will select the column and add a class name to it to help us with the styling. I will give it an item class. I think we can improve the design a great deal by adding an icon above the heading. Let's try. Just drag and drop it and double click to change it. I want this to be some dessert, like a cake. There was nothing suitable in the glyph icon set, but there is an icon for this in Font Awesome. There. The icon is way too small, so let's enlarge it with some CSS. Icon fonts are in fact fonts with vector glyphs instead of letters. So they respond to the font properties. To enlarge the icon, we'll just give it a larger font size. There, that looks much better. Let's make the heading less bold. All right. Now we are ready to make the other features. I will speed this up by duplicating the one we already did and I'll copy paste the text. Then I will change the icons. Let's see how this looks in the browser. The preview is already running, so we can switch to Chrome. Thanks to the bootstrap grid, the features list is fully responsive and adapts to the page width. The design looks a bit off right now, but we will improve this when we add some margins. Let's switch to the small size. We will add a top margin to every item and we'll tweak the headings margins a bit. Let's switch to the browser again. There is a definite improvement, but maybe it will look better with smaller headings. Yep, much better. Let's try giving the feature section a background, but because bootstrap containers don't stretch across the whole page, we will need to wrap it in a div and set the background to it. Just grab the div and drop it before the container. Then we take the container and move it inside the div. Let's add a class name to this div. I will call it dark section. I will go ahead and create a new CSS block for it. Let's give it a light gray background color. We will click the color preview to open up the color picker and we will choose a light blue color. Doesn't look too bad. We will tweak the margins and paddings a bit more until it looks pretty. There. Let's turn our attention to the navbar. I'm not a fan of the blue text and links so I will choose the inverted color theme. Let's switch to the browser again. One problem that I see is that the navbar is fluid and takes the full width of the page, which doesn't fit well with the design. 
there is a very easy fix for the responsive navbar. Just select it and remove the fluid checkbox. Something else that we can try is to make the bar fix to the top of the page. This is done with the position drop down. Let's switch to Chrome. We will need to add a margin to the promo element to compensate for the fixed navbar, but otherwise everything is fine. We can fix the margin by focusing the promo div and switching to the Styles tab. We will add the new margin right here. One more thing that we need to do is to add the logo. I will just grab the logo image file and drag and drop it before the first letter of the brand. Then we'll give the logo an ID. To make the logo smaller, we will write some CSS. The max height property will do this for us. We will also add some margins to better position the image. Another thing we can improve is the color of the icons. Let's make them the same color as the logo. I'll set it to a dummy color so that the color preview is shown and we can trigger the color picker. Then I will choose the eyedropper tool and pick a color from the logo. Let's see the result. Great, looks much better. Now, another thing we should improve is the color of the active navigation item. To do this, we need to override this bootstrap CSS block. We'll make a copy of it to our style sheet so we can edit it. Switch to the styles.css file and you'll see the new CSS block at the bottom. I'm going for a light yellow color without a border. Looks good to me. Let's jump to Chrome real quick and see the result. I think we can make a few tweaks to the text colors. First, the intro paragraph. We'll make it a bit lighter. Then the features, they need to be a slightly lighter color with more blue. We'll use the color picker for this. Great. We can now move to the photo gallery, which will showcase our client's work. I'll speed things up by duplicating the welcome section and adding it last to the page by dropping it into the body. We'll rename the section to gallery and we'll delete the paragraph. Then we will drop a row. We now need to drop a column. I could just drag the column from here like we did previously, but Bootstrap Studio gives you quick action buttons, which we can try out this time. Just focus the row and click the column button. We will again switch the column to take a third of the width, so we can place three items on the same row. Then we'll drop a thumbnail component inside it. We only need the image, so I will go ahead and delete the other components of the thumbnail. To set the image, just double click it and choose which photo to show. Let's pop open the HTML panel to see what the code looks like. You can see that we have only a thumbnail div and an image inside it. It's a good idea to make this a link to the full version of the image. To do this, we will use a link component and we'll set its URL to the full image. We need to place it directly in the thumbnail component. The HTML panel was updated instantly to show our new link. Now we will grab the image and drop it inside the link. Just delete the text, focus the image, and make it responsive. This makes it adapt to the size of the thumbnail. The only thing left is to set the URL of the link to point to the full image. Great. Let's create two copies. Now we double click them to change the images. 
and we will also change the URLs of the links. Let's switch to the browser again. You can see the thumbnail gallery at the bottom. It adapts nicely to the width of the page. The links also work, but it would be better if the images were opened in new tabs. I'll switch back to Bootstrap Studio and we'll set all link targets to blank. There. And now when we try clicking the links in the page again, they will open the photos like we want them. Very well. We are nearly done with our page. We still have a few things to do with the Jumbotron. First, we need to change the style of the button. We click to select it, then make it larger and more blue from the Options panel. Next, we need to copy over the text that the client sent us. We copy and paste the title. Then the subtitle. Also, we should change the text of the button. Great. Things shaped up pretty well. The only thing missing is a footer, but we can save us some time by getting one from Bootstrap Studio's online library. Just click the online tab in search. This one would do nicely. I'll hit the install button, which will fetch the component from our servers and install it. Once that's ready, we can grab the component and place it on the page. I'll drop it over the body so it is placed as the last element. And here it is. Notice that a new style sheet was created which holds all the CSS for the footer. Let's open it. There is quite a bit of code here. One thing that we should fix is the top margin. There's too much white space beneath the gallery. To do this, I'll just decrease this property. Since it is zero, we can remove it entirely. Now let's change the logo. I'll remove the blue part. I don't like how white everything is. Let's make it darker. The design tab in the color picker shows all colors used in the page. This light gray will do. Very well. Now we should change these links. Just double click to edit the text. We can delete the rest. The company name should also be changed, along with the year. I like how this turned out. Let's see how it looks in the browser. Okay, so the footer is responsive, but it stretches across the entire width of the page. This doesn't fit very well with the rest of the design. We should limit it. We can do this by using a container. We need to put it right before this row here. Drop this right in. Only thing left is to remove the padding. Great. And now when I open the browser, you can see that the footer aligns nicely with the rest of the content. Let's shrink it some more. Looks good. Everything is nice and responsive. One last touch that will make this page even better is to make the gallery images show in a light box. We can do this by importing a library from the cdn.js. Now we'll search for a light box. This looks like a good script. I'll copy the main CSS file first. Then I'll link it from here. This will include the style sheet in the page directly from the CDN URL. Click Import. We'll do the same with the JavaScript file. Copy it.
and paste it. Let's see what else we need to do to make the light box work. So we need to have a special data attribute to tell the light box to scan the photos. I'll just copy this, switch back to the app, create a new attribute, and paste it here. I'll put cakes as the name of the light box group so that the library knows that the images should be shown together as an album. I'll do the same for the other two photos. The preview is running, so let's switch to the browser. Scroll to the bottom and click one of the photos. And we see the photos are shown in a beautiful light box gallery. All that is left is to export the project. Choose a folder where you wish the files to be placed and double click it. Let's see what's in the folder. We have an index.html file and an assets folder. Inside the folder, we have all resources that the site uses, including the bootstrap framework in images, CSS, and JS files that we've created. The exported page looks nice and is fully responsive. Let's see what the code looks like. We see the style sheets and fonts imported in the head section. We've got the navbar, the main content, and the footer below. The JavaScript libraries and scripts which we use are included before the closing body tag. Overall, after exporting, we end up with a well-structured HTML5 document, which follows Bootstrap's best practices and looks as if an experienced front-end developer has written it by hand. And with this, our design is complete. Bootstrap Studio is a powerful tool that can make creating websites and layouts much faster. It offers powerful tools that can make you more productive and save you time. We are sure that there is a lot you can do with it. Thank you for watching.